Yo, Adam Saxon, Guy in a Cube, another week, another roundup. This one is full of community posts. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from both Patrick and myself. We good? Let's do this. Chris Wagner over at KratosBI.com has got a blog post looking at creating awesome navigation inside of Power BI. This is done, of course, through the magic of bookmark and selections, along with some other items that he walks you through inside of this blog post. The one thing I loved from this blog post is the fact that, you know, even Patrick and I, we typically refer to it as a Power BI template, and he's calling it a seed. And I love that because you want to seed the item that you're going to use within your organization. I've seen other organizations do this as well, where they've got this main seed file for Power BI that people can start from and then make it their own after that fact. And Chris does a great job walking you through how to create that seed file. And he's also at the bottom of the blog post has a couple of options you can download to get started. Good job, Chris. Thanks for giving me a new term. Trev Gate over at Marquee Insights has got a blog post to help you get started with Power BI. This is a collection of links to other items. It's a great resource just to have handy if you want to go find out where do you go for Power BI information. This is from blogs to podcasts, videos to other items, books that are out there as well. So if you're just getting started with Power BI and you're kind of lost with all the stuff that's out there, I know it can be extremely intimidating. Go ahead and check out this blog post. Treb's got you covered and check out all the links that he has in that blog post. Speaking of links, the links for this item, along with links to all the items in this week's roundup, including some bonus items, down in the description below. So go check it out. Matt Allington over at Accelerator BI has got a blog post looking at how do you get multiple lines as an access in your charts. He calls out that Power BI by default doesn't have this visualization out of the box, but there is a custom visual by the folks over at XViz that can get this done for you. And Matt walks you through how to set this up and actually get multiple lines in your chart. And I'm calling this out also because over the last week or two, I've actually had a few questions about like, how do you do this inside of Power BI? So Matt, awesome. Thank you for reading my mind and getting this out there for folks to figure out how to do this. The folks over at the Excel Club have got a blog post looking at six tips for using DAX inside of Excel or Power BI. That's right, you can use DAX in both. Did you know you could do that? So six tips, a lot of these are just common things to do either from a data modeling approach or just DAX itself. And they're items that we've called out here on Guy in a Cube, but I love that this blog just gets them all collected in a nice compact way that you can use when creating DAX or doing data modeling inside of your data model, whether it be in Excel or Power BI. My favorite item out of this is number five. And it basically says, don't do transformations inside of DAX if you can avoid it. And we've called that out here before. I know folks that I've worked with like Phil Seamark have called that out as well. Basically doing like string manipulation, I see that a lot, that can have a high cost in your DAX calculation. So try to avoid that if you can. Do it in Power Query, do it at your database level. Just do it somewhere other than DAX just because it's going to have a high cost. So thanks to the Excel Club for getting this out there. Great tips, great reminders. Go check it out. Links below. Reed Havens over at Havens BI has got a blog slash video where he walks through how you can accomplish distinct counts in Power Query maintaining query folding. Not gonna get into query folding in this video cause that's like a whole other video. And Reed gives you a quick summary inside of his video as to what query folding is. And then his problem is that he wants to get a distinct count of items at the Power Query level. And he shows you an example where it works and an example where it doesn't and what he did to differ that. One thing I do wanna call out here is that he calls out the view native query option in the context menu of a Power Query step. And he shows that, hey, yeah, this is available, which means we're query folding. Just because view native query isn't lit up does not necessarily mean that query folding is not occurring. And so Patrick's got a video talking about that. I'll link that up above where you can go find more information about that. 
particular case. But don't look at view native query if it's grayed out as a necessary indicator that query folding is not occurring. This is a great video, an awesome thing about how if you just tweak the steps a little bit, you may be able to maintain higher performance than if you didn't. So great job, Reed. Check out the video. I've got that linked up above and down in the description below. All right, I wanna pass this off to you. What was your favorite item this last week? Maybe it was something I mentioned. Maybe it was something I didn't. Let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. Smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome. And we'll see you in the next video.